I'm going to give you a list of the top five fighters I would like to see Anthony Joshua fight next in order of priority, okay? And this is a, my personal list. You don't have to agree with it. You can disagree. It's totally fine. But this is how I feel. These are the top five fighters I'd like to see Anthony Joshua fight next in order of priority. Right? Anthony Joshua is currently 22 and 0, 21 KOs, unified heavyweight champion, WBA, IBF, WBO. So top of the list for me to fight Anthony Joshua in his next fight is Deontay Wilder. I've long been saying, and I'll continue to say, I want to see the undisputed fight before all else. As Deontay Wilder has been saying himself, one face, one name, one champion. Now, he appears to have abandoned that mantra ever since the Tyson Fury fight. Maybe the Fury fight has knocked his confidence a little bit. I don't know, but he doesn't seem so keen to step in there with Anthony Joshua these days. Uh, but be that as it may, I still want to see this fight. And this is still my number one priority, Anthony Joshua versus Deontay Wilder, ASAP, please. Second on the list, Tyson Fury. If the Wilder fight can't happen, I want to see Anthony Joshua in there with the Gypsy King. It will be a huge fight in the UK. Uh, Tyson Fury still holds this, you know, fictional lineal title for whatever it's worth. So he can use that to market the fight and for anybody who cares about this lineal that goes back to Klitschko, well, it will be on the line against Anthony Joshua and whoever wins the bout can walk away with that little fictional trinket as well as Joshua's actual belts by recognized sanctioning bodies. So yeah, I think it would be, I don't think, I, I truly believe it's a very important fight in the heavyweight division, Anthony Joshua versus Tyson Fury, not only domestically, but internationally in the United States and just for the world, for the heavyweight division, we need to find out who the best is. Tyson Fury just ran Deontay Wilder very close and got a draw. So it's unclear who the, who the best out of you know Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder is right now. They may run it back to find out for sure. But either way, at this point, in the eyes of many, Tyson Fury is at the very least, just as viable as Deontay Wilder in terms of, you know, the, the top three in the pecking order of the heavyweight division. So Joshua versus Fury makes a hell of a lot of sense. And if he can't get Wilder, I'd like to see him fight Fury. If he can't get Fury, if that fight can't happen for whatever reason, I'd like to see him fight Jarrell Miller. Now, I've gone into the reasons for this before. It's more of a stylistic thing than anything. And it's also the fact that he hasn't fought Miller before. Miller's a young guy, you know, he's only just 30 years old, in the prime of his life, never been dropped, never seen him hurt in a fight. He's a massive guy. What did he weigh for his last fight? 315 pounds, enormous, throws a lot of punches, not necessarily a massive one-punch knockout artist, but I just feel if Jarrell Miller can take Anthony Joshua's power, it's an open question as to whether Anthony Joshua can cope with Jarrell Miller's work rate and pressure. An open question. And for that reason, Jarrell Miller's third on my list in terms of who I'd like to see Anthony Joshua face next. Fourth on the list is King Kong, Luis Ortiz. Uh, nobody seems to know his real age. His official age is 39, but who knows? It might be older than that. I want to see Luis Ortiz in some big fights before it's too late because father time, you have to imagine, is catching up to him and he can only outrun him for so long. So I'd rather see Luis Ortiz in against one of the champions sooner rather than later. So yeah, if he can't get a Jerome Miller fight on, Anthony Joshua, then Luis Ortiz is uh, nearly as viable in my, uh, in my book. Now, some people would prefer to see Luis Ortiz get a shot at Joshua than Miller. Get a shot at Joshua, and I can understand that. I got sympathy for that view. But I just feel like Jarrell Miller's pressure, in my mind, could be a serious problem for Joshua. I don't think Joshua's stamina is great. I know he's been 12 rounds against Joseph Parker. 
He came from behind against, well, behind on my card against Klitschko. I know officially he was up on the cards, which I think is crazy. I thought he was clearly losing to Klitschko going into the 11th. Uh, but be that as it may, I know Joshua has been the distance and rescued fights late, but I'm still not convinced by his stamina. Even since he's dropped a bit of weight, I still think he's uh, he's got questionable stamina. Okay, I'm not saying that it, it can't improve, but he's a very big guy. He's muscular and, you know, lactic acid builds up in those muscles, so on and so forth. And when you've got a guy like Miller, who's going to pressure you constantly, constantly and be on your case, I'd like to see how Anthony Joshua's engine reacts to that. I'd like to see. To me, it's an open question. With Luis Ortiz against Joshua, it's going to be more of a technical fight. And if it goes past the halfway stage, I don't know, man. Like, it's not going to be for a relentlessly high pace, is it? Anthony Joshua versus Luis Ortiz. Let's be real. Ortiz can't really sustain an extremely high pace. He picks his punches well, Ortiz. Uh, he's got good punching power. He's a good counter puncher. He's very good technically, but I don't think he's going to exert Joshua physically. And so if Joshua was able to nullify the left hand and get into the second half of the fight, and it might be that kind of fight. It might be kind of a fiddly fight where Joshua was just trying to stay away from the southpaw left, um, take Ortiz into the late, you know, later rounds and turn it up a little bit, being the younger man. I don't know, man. I just, uh, you can never be certain about how a fight is going to play out, obviously. Or we'd all be millionaires from betting on boxing right now if we were all certain about how fights are going to play out. We're all making educated guesses. Uh, but I just feel like Joshua would probably deal with Ortiz, you know. Ortiz was out boxing Deontay Wilder for a couple rounds. Not by much, you know, by small margins. But... Anthony Joshua is more technically sound than Deontay Wilder. Make no mistake about that. And I don't think Luis Ortiz, from a technical point of view, would enjoy as much success against Joshua as he did against Wilder. That's just my personal suspicion. So for that reason, I would put Miller as a priority above Luis Ortiz for a shot against Anthony Joshua. And anyway, fifth on my list is Dylan White. And nothing against Dylan White. I've got the most amount of respect for the guy. I think that in terms of who deserves a title shot, nobody deserves a title shot more than Dylan White. Yeah, so do not get it twisted or misconstrued what I'm saying here. Dylan White has more than done enough to earn his shot at Andy Joshua and Deontay Wilder. But in terms of what me as a boxing fan, what I would like to see next Dylan White would be fifth on the list of priorities rather than first, second, third, or fourth. And that's still high up, right? I mean, there's a top 10, there's a top 15. Dylan White is still in the top five. So, yeah. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below about my list. If you've got a different list, if you've got the same names in your list, but they're in a different order, then please drop it in the comment section below. I'll be very interested to read it, all right? It's happening, I'm out. Join me on Patreon. I upload a minimum of two podcasts every single week, covering a wide variety of controversial topics, as well as live stream Q&A sessions. Take a look on screen right now at some of the podcasts I've produced so far. For just $3 a month, the equivalent of about £2 a month, you get access to all my new podcasts and my entire back catalogue of past podcasts, including my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. You can listen on your computer or on your smartphone or tablet by downloading the Patreon app from the Google Play Store or the App Store for free. The Patreon app also allows you to download each podcast in MP3. For less than the price of a cup of coffee, you get access to dozens of hours of exclusive content. It's easy to sign up, there's no contract, and you can cancel at any time. So come and join our community of free and critical thinkers by signing up with me here on Patreon today.